Hi, this is going to be part one of a history of the White Rite Church of Christ. Uh, we'll include some religious, doctrinal, theological items as we go along, but uh, hopefully this will be beneficial in various ways. I found this quotation somewhere, supposedly by someone named Carmen Renee Berry. She says, if it's not in the Bible, then these folks aren't going to do it, which is pretty accurate. I want to give acknowledgments to Wilma McFatridge, who gave, gave a lot of accurate information and help as I prepared this historical lesson. I'm going to include at certain points additional comments on the theology of the Restoration plea so that it goes along with our history. You know, not every assertion herein is ironclad fact. Um, sources, accounts uh, differ. It's hard to know, but uh, I'm just putting this together as my own best reading of the different evidence. Uh, the Kentucky Town Church and the White Right Church, what's the connection? Well, the Kentucky Town Church originally was the original. It was reloaded, relocated its building and, and all to White Right in 1878. So its history and, and origin is our history and origin. We can't really separate these two groups, these two entities. Just a bit of a word about terminology. Uh, as you look back in history, you're going to see lots of different terminology, lots of different identifiers for the church, sometimes Church of Christ, sometimes Christian Church, or Christians, sometimes Disciples of Christ, also known as the Restoration Movement, the Reformers, the Restorers. Um, many of the times, especially early on, these were all interchangeable. Uh, sometimes we've heard ourselves referred to as Campbellites. We regard that as pejorative. We don't follow human beings, but uh, nonetheless, it's something frequently used for us. Uh, for clarity in this lesson, I'll just typically say Church of Christ, although I'm going to have to vary that some. Oh, one partial explanation for the use of Christian church along with Church of Christ is uh, I, th I believe early on they preferred Church of Christ and yet individually called themselves Christians. So they would say, what are you? What church do you go to? I'm just a Christian. And so people would say he goes to the Christian church. So that's the origin perhaps in some respect of the Christian church. Of course, specifying a name for a church which is aimed only simply at being the church of the New Testament is, is not easy because there's no one specific name which we find in Scripture for the Lord's body. So we had various interchangeable names, but eventually uh, the instrumental churches seem to have largely settled on Christian church, the a cappella churches, the Church of Christ. Uh, I still correctly hear objections to, I'm a Church of Christ, well, which I've heard. Uh, of course, the proper phrase is, I'm a Christian, or I'm a member of the Church of Christ, and not, I'm a Church of Christ. Purists would deny there's any one formal name for the Church established by the Lord. Uh, some would insist on a lower case for the word Church, as in Church of Christ. But... Regardless, practical considerations generally require us to have some type of identifier. Historically, this congregation has frequently been identified as the Christian Church. Um, the White Right Central Christian Church, which was established in 1896, is essentially identical except for uh, music and worship. And we also need to remember that much of contemporary Christian church disciples of Christ 
uh, denomination is considerably different from those early congregations which were known as the Christian Church. What about our spiritual history? Well, we would hold that our congregation was established by the gospel first preached on Pentecost about A.D. 33. That would be our spiritual history, but we're not particularly interested in that for uh, this lesson. We're more focused on the theological corporeal history, the earthly history. And for that, we go largely back to Alexander Campbell, who was a Scotch uh, Irish preacher who came, uh, who lived 1788, 1866. He came to America in 1809 as a young man who settled in Bethany, Virginia. And uh, he spent a good bit of time a good bit of time in Kentucky and his work, and so we'll, that, that'll become significant as we go along. Campbell really despised divisions and the divisiveness of Christian denominationalism. He, he was, it was very rife back in his native country. Uh, he craved unity. Uh, he wanted to have a plan to unite everyone who were who was an adherent of Christ and so he came up with a plan. Campbell's plan was we can all unite and worship together harmoniously if we have an agreed upon standard. That is don't don't have something like a creed or some human organization to set forth what people should do. Just go back and agree that we're going to limit yourself to and grant all of your religious faith and practice in the New Testament. Uh, they thought this would be acceptable because most Christians would have no objections to the New Testament, or as Campbell liked to call it, the revealed will of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So the idea was that if we granted all of our religious faith and practice in the New Testament, limited ourselves to that, then we would have a good basis for a common ground for worship and for working together as Christians. And of course, if it's in the New Testament, uh, we would have, we would thank God's approval. We still hopefully think that's where our congregation stands today. We're fond of calling ourselves New Testament Christians. In 1817, Colin McKinney of Kentucky was converted by Alexander Campbell, uh, interested, of course, in the same things, unity and limiting oneself to the New Testament. Uh, our area uh, city of McKinney and also Collin County in Texas, with which most of us are very familiar, uh, are the, na uh, the namesake, their namesakes of Colin McKinney. So in 1830, McKinney moves to Texas. First of all, he went up to the northeast corner, just north of Texarkana by the Red River, and uh, establishes a place up there. He was perhaps the first member of the Church of Christ to come to Texas. It's un uncertain, of course. But we would think he must have brought his faith with him because he was very devout. And uh, when he brought a church, well, like most all the early settlers, they didn't have a building available, so they would meet in a, they would meet in a house. They would have a house church. So he spent several years up there. Uh, during the years 1844-1846, he is given a job of encouraging settlers to come to Texas and evidently spent time during the period of 1830-1845 as McKinney's children grow up and become adults uh, some of them move over to what is now present-day McKinney near Anna Van Alstein uh, I don't have any dates on that again uh, no doubt churches were house churches again at this period of time or a house church. Then in 1846, uh, evidently due to a big flood on the Red River, Colin McKinney himself comes to the area where the family now establishes the vanished town of Mantua, Mantua, uh, two or three miles south of what is now Van Alstein. Uh, 
the church established in Mantua was sometimes known as Liberty Church. And B.F. Hall, a close friend of McKinney, which we'll see more about him later, preached here in the 1850s. Then this Mantua, the community and the church, eventually moved to Van Alstine when the railroad comes through and Van Alstine is established. Uh, the Mantua Van Alstine Church claims to be the first organized continuously meeting Christian church in Texas. There's some dispute about this, but that's uh, their historical claim. The current First Christian Church of Van Alstine is a direct descendant of the Church of Christ organized by the McKinneys. Uh, it's historically related. Today it would be theologically somewhat different. We believe that one of Karen's first cousins uh, was a minister some years back of uh, this congregation in Van Alstine. We don't know that for certain. In the 1850s, going back to B.F. Hall, he buys property just to the east of present-day White Rat, about Lindsay Creek, I think it's called. But during this same general period, he preaches at Mantua, where Colin McKinney is an elder. Uh, they're, they're very good friends. And uh, almost surely he does some supply preaching at Kentucky Town, which was also becoming prominent and developing at this time. And then, uh, as we will see in 1859, he's a major contributor to the success of the Kentucky Town Church, Church of Christ. I'm including this little map here to show a, the geographical connection between Mantua and Kentucky Town. It's uh, 10 or 12 miles across country, but not an impossible distance to have a lot of interaction, even even in ancient, even in the previous century. What we need to note here is that if the ministry of B.F. Hall in Kentucky Town is considered an outreach of the Mantua Church, then our congregation has a historical connection with the first organized church in Texas. Now changing um, topics for just a second here, in 1834 to 1836, we have the Andrew Thomas family moving from Tennessee to Texas. They were the very first to come into this area, very first. Uh, first of all, Andy Thomas settled in 1834 near Honey Grove, and then a couple of years later, he moves to this area of Kentucky town, just south of there, accompanied by no less than Davy Crockett, and our very own Darwins are direct descendants of Andy Thomas. And then during this period of 1836 up to about 1852, there's a lot more settlers from Kentucky come to Kentucky town. You would have to guess some were influenced by Colin McKinney, who was in, who had the job of encouraging settlements. So uh, <clears throat> the, the community continues to grow and there's evidence of brethren, Church of Christ brethren in Kentucky town area from its first settlement. I don't know this, but if Andy Thomas had been a member of the church, it would help explain the early presence of the church in Kentucky town. Um, returning to B.F. Hall, who was in the area and preached partly in Matchway, he was a, a Kentucky evangelist, a dentist by trade as well. He was uh, converted through reading the writings of Alexander Campbell good friend of Colin McKinney. He was a powerful preacher and traveled widely in various evangelistic efforts. Uh, he was in the Kentucky Town White Ride area at least by 1854. Uh, he was he settled slightly east of present White Ride, preached, preaches at the time of Mantua and the church organized by the McKinney family. So this will uh, conclude part one. Part two will begin with a major event involving B.F. Hall. And uh, appreciate you listening uh, to our lesson.